Hey, what is up, YouTube? And in today's jailbreaking update video, we are going to talk about this week's recent jailbreaking news as well as discuss the question that is on everyone's mind, and that is, is jailbreaking dead? The short answer being no, definitely not, and we'll get into further details on this later in this video, but for now, we are going to take a quick look at the recent exploit discovered by a mobile security researcher, one from Google's own Project Zero named Ian Beard. Now, for those of you who don't know, Ian Beer is commonly known for finding many security flaws within Mac and iOS, and some of you may recognize the name as he was most recently known for discovering the Mac portal exploit, which was then used by Luca to create the Yalu jailbreak for iOS 10 within a month of it being released. And just a few days ago on July 31st, Beer is back at it again as he published his findings on yet another iOS 10 exploit, this one being called Triple Fetch. This exploit, however, is only a user land exploit, meaning it cannot by itself be used to create a jailbreak, but it does shed some light of hope onto the jailbreaking scene. This exploit could have the potential to contribute to yet another jailbreak utility for devices running iOS 10.3.2 or lower, and we'll talk exactly what this means later in more detail, but for now, I'm just going to show you guys exactly what was posted. This news was first announced on Ben Hawk's Twitter account when this tweet was posted, and it basically reads, Ian Beer's user space research tool for iOS 10 to 10.3.2 has been released, and it has an associated download link with it. So I'll leave this up on the screen so we can take a look at it for a second, but right off the bat, we can see that this exploit can only be used on devices running iOS 10.3.2 or lower. That is because the exploit discovered has been patched in iOS 10.3.3, meaning it is not a zero-day exploit. And if we take a look at Apple's site directly at iOS 10.3.3's release notes, we can see that this exploit is in fact patched in iOS 10.3.3. Now we can see the impact being an application may be able to execute arbitrary code with system privileges. So right here we can see that this exploit is not a kernel based exploit, it's only a user land exploit because it only allows us with system privileges. And we can see that it is a vulnerability within the libxpc which is essentially a part of the user land. And lastly you can see the credit goes to Ian Beer of Google Project Zero. So that is about all Apple had to say about the exploit itself, but if you guys want to learn more about it, I'll have a link down in the description to the Proof of Concept project, which links directly to the site that it is hosted on. Again, the exploit is called Triple Fetch, and works on iOS 10.3.2 and lower, and is based on the CVE 2017-7047 security vulnerability. So turning away from the technicalities of what was released, many people are wondering what exactly this means for the jailbreaking scene. Now this doesn't necessarily mean there's an iOS 10.3.2 jailbreak coming around the corner, but this exploit does, like I say, give some hope that there still is a future to jailbreaking. Now, whether that means it's for iOS 10.3.2 or iOS 11, we'll have to see, but Oddly enough, we also have this tweet tweeted by Jonathan Levin. He's an author of various iOS hacking books such as OS Internals, and his tweet basically reads this. It says, if you're at iOS 10.3.3, downgrade to 10.3.2 while you can. Ian Beer's awesome CVE 2017-7047, bit unstable, but can be adapted to a dev jailbreak. So as we can see, the internet is already raving that this new exploit might be able to be adapted to a working jailbreak and or be used to find new exploits to create a working jailbreak. So as a word of precaution, guys, if you guys are on iOS 10.3.2 or lower, just stay there as Apple has recently stopped signing iOS 10.3.2. Thus, if you're on an iOS 11 beta, you're going to have to downgrade to iOS 10.3.2. 3.3 and that is the only firmware that you can downgrade to now. But like I said, for those of us waiting in anticipation for a new jailbreak utility, this exploit discovered offers us some hope that yet another developer may come along and use it to discover their own vulnerabilities. This exploit being user land exploit cannot be used by itself to create a jailbreak for it doesn't provide access to the kernel. It only allows developers root access, meaning they do have the power to view information about a user's running processes such as the springboard or user apps or background daemons, and it also allows them to experiment and modify the program as it's running, but that is as much as they can do. They cannot create a side-loaded app that can run Cydia or anything along those lines. They can only kind of see what's going on under the hood. Essentially, it grants developers access to certain information that would otherwise be unattainable. And this extra information could potentially be used to discover a new vulnerability, which could then lead to a new jailbreak. More specifically, Ian Beer released the toolkit which allows you to do all of this, and it contains two major exploits, one which bypasses the sandbox, and the other being a privilege escalation exploit which essentially provides root access, allowing the toolset to write to the iOS file system directly. 
And as this exploit is not as powerful as the Mac portal exploit discovered by him earlier this year, this toolset still could be used by another security researcher in order to expand on the excellent work that he has already carried out. Essentially, we could see something happen like with what happened with the Mac portal exploit. It provided a number of components required for other developers to put together a functional 10.1.x jailbreak, but for the majority of us who are mostly interested in news pertaining to a new jailbreak utility, this exploit at the time is far from a new jailbreak. This tool set, like I said, is designed to be used in conjunction with other exploits or be used to discover kernel level exploits in order to create a fully functional developer jailbreak. The final step would then be to take that developer jailbreak and transform it into a public beta or an official jailbreak utility for iOS 10.3.2 and lower. But just because this exploit only works on iOS 10.3.2, that does not mean a developer couldn't come along and find an exploit that still exists in iOS 10.3.3. Thus, if you're on 10.3.3, it might not be the end of the world right now. It is still too early to tell exactly what is going to happen because of this exploit being released. But with all that being said, I still have to argue that jailbreaking is far from dead. Jailbreaking is getting harder, yes, but it's proven time and time again that it's far from impossible. And mostly because it's the jailbreak community and anything can happen. And although we have yet to receive a real jailbreak utility in ages, as we saw today, new exploits and vulnerabilities are still being discovered and new jailbreak demos are still being performed, meaning a new jailbreak utility is bound to be on the horizon. Earlier this year, we saw a demo of an iOS 10.3.2 jailbreak as well as an iOS 11 beta 2 jailbreak. This was performed by the mobile security research team Keen Lab, and it's unclear if these exploits will be used to create an iOS 10.3.x or be used towards an early iOS 11 jailbreak, but since iOS 11 is scheduled to be released relatively soon, it's looking more and more likely that Keen Lab is saving their jailbreak for when iOS 11 is released to the public early this September. That is if they intend to release it at all. Again, this was just a jailbreak demo and was not a commitment to a public release. But also in the background, Pangu has demoed their own iOS 10.3.1 jailbreak earlier this year, but since then they have been dead quiet. And that is not uncommon, Pangu has remained silent in the background right up until they release a new jailbreak utility. Pangu being a big player in the jailbreak community is most likely playing a game of chess. They are very strategic when they release a new jailbreak utility, and that seems to be the biggest thing holding them back right now. They are essentially waiting for the perfect opportunity. But again, as we eagerly await a new jailbreak utility, the best policy for now is to stay on the lowest firmware possible. This is to ensure that you have the best chances of jailbreaking in the future, but most importantly, avoid iOS 10.3.3 at all costs for now. If you're still on iOS 10.3.2 or lower, for no reason upgrade to iOS 10.3.3 if you don't have to. Again, like I've said in the past, it's becoming a common practice for Apple to immediately patch a new jailbreak within the first few days of it being released, meaning once a new jailbreak utility arises, we'll have a limited amount of time to update and jailbreak. This just means for the jailbreaking community, we have to stay on top of when a new jailbreak utility might be coming out, and thus is one of the biggest reasons why we do this series. As of now, our best hope for a new iOS 10.3.x jailbreak is for a developer to use Ian Beer's new exploit as an aid to discover a new kernel vulnerability within iOS and thus eventually create a working jailbreak utility. Secondly, it would also not surprise me if we see a new jailbreak utility from Pangu sometime in the near future, as they have not come out with one since iOS 9.3.3. Well guys, I really hope this gave you some insight on the future of jailbreaking, and although we have yet to receive a real jailbreak in ages, there is a ton of stuff going on in the background which leads me to believe that jailbreaking is far from dead. Jailbreaking is getting harder, yes, like I've said, but it's proven time and time again that it is far from impossible. But let me know down in the comments section what you guys would like to see more, an iOS 10.3.2 jailbreak or an early on jailbreak for iOS 11 when it was released. Anyway guys, if you're on iOS 10.3.3 and or for any reason just want to really check out iOS 11, go ahead and click on the link to the video that I'm displaying now on how to upgrade to iOS 11. As of recording this video guys, Apple has seeded iOS 11 Beta 5 to registered developers and to users in Apple's beta testing program. But don't worry guys, the same tutorial and same process will be done for all iOS 11 betas. Again, this being beta 5, it is likely that this is one of the last betas we will see any user facing changes to. As the summer proceeds, it is likely that we'll see more betas pertaining to security enhancements and performance updates rather than new features, but that is okay. Anyway guys, if you want to check it out, the link is right there. And again, before I go, don't forget to subscribe to stay fully updated on any future developments such as a new jailbreak utility. I will be issuing a tutorial as soon as one is released, guys, and if you want to be updated more often, like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. But in the end, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so pumped to be making videos as much as possible, and there will only be more coming, so definitely subscribe and stay tuned 
for future videos. It is a very exciting time in the jailbreaking community because hopefully we will see a new jailbreak for either iOS 10.3.2 or iOS 11. But in the end, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, this is Tony, signing out.